I'm currently writing a book and it's making me crazy. It's a process that always makes me crazy because it slowly devours you like some hideous monster. But the good news is, once the monster swallows and digests you, you come out better for going through the ordeal. So far, I've written 14 books and contributed to five others. Here are the titles. Did you miss them? I'll show you again. Someone once asked me, how do you write a book? That's a huge question. It's like asking, how do you build a house? What kind of house are we talking about? A shotgun shack, a 30 room mansion, a castle, a salt box on the Cape? The short answer is you can't write a book. It's too much to bite off. It's too big of a project to wrap your head around. I know that's a strange thing to hear from someone who's written a bunch of these things and who does it for a living, but it's true. But don't give up hope. We all have a story to tell and stories demand to be told. I once interviewed legendary mountaineer Mark Inglis. Inglis was the first man ever to climb Mount Everest without legs. He's the only man to snap one of his legs in two on Everest, then be able to duct tape it, make repairs, and keep going. I remember Mark telling me that you can't climb a mountain. It's too big. It's too far up. But you can take one step, and then you can take another. Eventually, those steps start to add up. I feel the same way about books. You can't write a book because it's too many pages, too much to comprehend all at once. But you can write a sentence and then a paragraph. Eventually, those paragraphs start to add up into pages. Pages can turn into chapters. And you realize you're on the book journey. But where does inspiration come from? Some writers like to carry a notebook and pen with them at all times, just in case inspiration strikes. They may be in line at the grocery store waiting for an oil change, and then boom, a good idea falls from the sky. Not me. I don't carry around a notebook and a pen because I found that good ideas just won't leave me alone. When I start down the path of writing sentences that turn into paragraphs that turn into pages, I find myself looking at the world through glasses colored by that book. Ideas and subjects start showing up in the strangest of places. Someone will say something to me in passing that I just hadn't thought of before, but it totally relates to what I'm working on. It's kind of like shopping for a new car. Have you ever noticed that once you're in the market for a new car, all you see and hear are car commercials? You start wondering if suddenly there are more car commercials on this week than have ever been on before. The answer, of course, is no. It's the same amount of car commercials as there ever was. It's just that now they mean something to you. These book ideas are like ghosts that haunt me. If I go too long without writing it down, those ghosts become demons, and writing the book becomes an exorcism. It's the only way those ideas will leave me alone. Everyone has a story, and stories matter. You can say you don't have time to write your book, but that's just an excuse. It means your ghosts have yet to turn into demons. Because once you're plagued by those forces, you will make time. You'll turn words into sentences, and sentences into paragraphs, and paragraphs into chapters. And eventually, you'll hold your book like a child in your arm, and then set it free in the hopes that it will ring true to others.